So I'm going to explore this basic trade-off between big versus small as due uh, from an economic point of view uh, in this short presentation. And it's all based on an old analysis from a, a simple case. And the real situation is more complex, uh, but this analysis um, leads you to some simple and intuitive understanding of the trade-off, so which is what I want to use. And by the way, this was built upon uh, the experience of building steel plants in India uh, back, oh well, in uh, half a century ago. So here's the picture, what it all comes out to. Let me explain the picture first, then let's talk about the implications. So I have on the horizontal axis, is this alpha, which I've been talking about. And he ran the numbers because it's a simple, uh, simple analysis actually, which I'm not gonna repeat, you can, you can look it up, but it's not uh, crucial to the understanding. Um, so that from our purposes, uh, the economy of scale factors is in the range between 0.6 and 100. Um, and so this is the economy of scale along the horizontal axis. On the vertical axis is this, how often, if you're going to have modules, how often should you repeat them to be e efficient? And it's based upon the simple analysis that it's, an, it's a linear growth. But um, again, uh, having made that analysis, it gives you the, the trade-offs which I'm going to be looking for. So here is the cycle time, which also translates in the size because if you have 10% growth a year, if you're supposed to build it every eight years, it's talking about 80% growth. So the size of the plant, of the module, basically is in this way, and this is the economy of scale. And it shows the, the, all right, so let me just, that's the setup for it. And now let me explain it, uh, what's happening. This is the same graph as before. So it says if I have higher discount rates, so this is from 10% to 5, 15%, Higher discount rates, sorry, higher discount rates mean that you ought to build smaller, which says again that, uh, in fact, if you're looking at it from here to here, you go from uh, at, uh, say, 70% uh, factor for economy of scale, you go from about seven down to about four and a bit. So you make it um, uh, basically about 40% uh, smaller is your size of your module. And on the other hand, if you have greater economies of scale, you build it large. You have no economy of scale, there's no benefit to building it more than the existing demand, so that you have the two factors, that it's a trade-off between economy of scale and the discount rate. Greater discount rate, build smaller. Greater economies of scale, sorry, greater economies of scale, which means smaller numbers here, there's a little bit of uh, cognitive dissonance, smaller numbers mean greater economies of scale, um, you build larger. That's the basic trade-off, which I was trying to uh, uh, express earlier. So that's, it is a graphical representation of the kind of thing that can happen. Now, um, there's another, so you say, well, how sensitive is all this? So here's the kind of thing that, that ha happens. So here is now the total cost of, a, of the plant and the cycle time that is how big you make it, uh, considering a, a, common, a, a constant a, a growth per year. If I go from four to eight, I double the size. So the response is, the observation is, the optimum is flat. What do I mean by that? Is that, here, if we hear, uh, since we these things can't be predicted that precisely, that going from say a size of based on four times the growth rate to up to about here about ten or twelve times the growth rate, is it doesn't make that much difference. So it makes a great deal of difference uh, that you want to build some time in advance, but that the optimal is not that um, uh, that not that significant. Um, but you don't want to be building for 15 or 20 years in advance because then it really starts uh, hitting you. 
Now this was calculated for a particular set of values and it changes if you do um, uh, it at other times. But the mo notion is, well, if you, if you look at a relatively sm small units, you can have it better, not for 15 years, not for 20 years. So the implications here are, which I wanted to bring out through this, <coughs> is that for industries with economy of scale, such as electric power, chemical processes, and so forth, and assuming that you have a steady growth indefinitely, small plants, that is very small ones, are uneconomical. The optimal size is associated with growth from between about five and 10 years of growth. Um, and they're not especially sensitive to the higher end because, and that's good because the forecasts are not accurate. So modest size. But now this analysis assumes the growth is gonna continue on indefinitely. But what happens if the growth stops, decreases? What's the risk? Well, you risk building capacity that's not needed. What can you do about it? Well, you build smaller so there's less reliance on the future. This is like similar, but not the same as Ali's comments that the oil company, I think it was that he was working with, built two plants as so as not to be vulnerable in case something happened. In this case, not that the capacity would stop, but because they wanted to be able to be assured that they could meet their clients' needs or their market share and therefore wanted uh, to have them smaller. So the trade-offs that we're talking about here is between the higher cost per units for small plants when operating capacity versus saving by not paying for extra capacity. So there's a trade-off here between that you need to think about very particular to the specifics of your situation between taking advantage of economies of scale, which is a typical uh, driving force behind uh, planning for uh, a lot of industry versus uh, building it incrementally and smaller, which gives you advantages uh, of it. And I will be talking later on about uh, the, uh, a case about doing this in South Australia where uh, they are building not only uh, they built a water a water supply plant which was built at a terrific size for economy of scale and they were thinking about doing the same thing for an LNG plant and it illustrates the uh, advantages of that trade-offs and how you want to modulate between the size and the uh, of the capacity and when you implement it. So the Takeaways from the discussion so far is if there's no economy of scale, don't build an anticipation of demand. Expand as needed. If there are, then you, may, you might want to build a somewhat in the future, but not aggressively in the future. The more uncertainty there are, the smaller the increments um, when big capacity is not fully used or even needed. That is, the risk of not needing it uh, for whatever reason is a risk uh, as a reason not to build as big big as it might as the engineering might like to have so i want to now add in the effect of learning uh, which i mentioned has the emphasizes the uh, effect of um, it, uh, the discount rate so here is the tail end of the man's analysis Basically, um, uh, so I've taken it from 0 0.6 to 0.95. This is basically uh, a, di a discrete uh, representation. That's why there are bumps in these curves and with no learning and at different interest rates. And I'm comparing this to uh, another case with learning and you have no learning, which is up here. And if you have higher amounts of learning, it really decreases it. So it's a, I intend by this as an illustration of the idea that learning adds on to the effect of discount rates in terms of arguing against uh, larger ones, uh, larger plants, which is all in the context that 
it's nice to have modules as a way of dealing with uncertainty. So the summary here is uncertainty is a main driver against are the pervasive economies of scale that impel designs for large capacity and four are the discount rate and the learning in addition to the uncertainty. So the big picture I want you to leave you with is that economies of scale are widespread and in that way they have been a mantra for engineering design to build big plants and you see this very easily in the uh, um, electric power industry where this has been the norm for bigger plants uh, as opposed to smaller plants which you can then distribute around the landscape and don't have the same distribution costs and it's also then the pattern of uh, oil uh, platforms of being large as being more efficient and so on as opposed to smaller ones which uh, reduce the uh, risks or the uncertainties associated with uh, the performance of the field and in that context that smaller units may be better. So there's an argument for the investigation of smaller units and our work with BP and subsequently um, with all the one we did with Oli de Beck in particular uh, was uh, a, a really interesting with BP because it was so uh, against the idea of uh, looking at smaller units, um, but is proven uh, actually uh, quite productive uh, for them.